A senior Ukrainian official says Russian forces have almost captured Severodonetsk. It's a key battleground in the fight in the Donbass region. The industrial city has been the main focus of Russia's offensives over recent weeks, and fighting has been intense, with casualties on both sides. Ukrainian forces are holding on to just one factory in the city. Hundreds of civilians are trapped in bomb shelters underneath. This is the battle for Severodonetsk, but from the Russian side. In the distance is the Azot chemical plant, said to be the last holdout of Ukrainian forces. A team from Chinese state television joined Chechen fighters as they tried to capture the destroyed city. We are very close to the industrial zone of the plant, the commander says, and we are confident that we will take control of it. But the Ukrainians say they are still fighting and have not given up on Severodonetsk yet. As tensions between the Western Alliance and Russia, Iran continues, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov is on a two-day visit to Tehran for talks on boosting trade and energy cooperation as the two nations grapple with Western economic sanctions. According to media reports, Lavrov will meet with his Iranian counterpart, Hossein Amir, Hossein Amir Abdullahain. Today, Lavrov and Iranian officials, they're likely to discuss the nuclear deal, which was finalized in 2015, but has been stalled since March amid sharp differences between Tehran and Washington. Russia played a key role in that deal, taking charge of Iran's excess enriched uranium stocks beyond those permitted under the agreement. The two countries, they're also likely to discuss further strengthening energy cooperation and boosting bilaterals. Hospitals in Iraq's Kurdish region are on high alert. An outbreak of cholera has led to hundreds of people coming for treatment every day. All have the same symptoms. Severe vomiting and diarrhea are widespread, partially due to cholera infection and due to gastritis and other germ infections that usually spreads during this season every year. It differs from one year to another. Health officials in the Kurdish region are worried by the rising number of cases. Suleimania and Erbil provinces have been hit the hardest, and several people are reported to have died. This year, Beijing is hosting the meeting of BRICS emerging economies. The five nations, that is Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, they account for more than 40% of the global population and nearly a quarter of the world's gross domestic product. And on the eve of a virtual summit, leaders from BRICS nations addressed a business forum. The summit comes amid a raging war in Eastern Europe. In a speech ahead of a virtual summit with other BRICS leaders, Chinese President Xi Jinping warned against expanding military ties. So the, the location that they are trying to look at is now converging into an area that we're looking at from three independent data sets, which is from Inmarsat, in uh, another one from the risk path, the uh, weak propagation, and then also the oceanography, which we do. Uh, and they all are coming together to say that they are very much in the same area. So what Ocean Infinity is, is, uh, is actually going through a, a, a bigger system, and they're actually going to use remotely controlled ships. Uh, so before, when they did the search, they had a, uh, a mothership which was deploying uh, instruments uh, to map the seabed. Now, in this particular case, in the next installment, they're going to do everything remotely. They're going to deploy um, uh, boy, um, underwater vehicles from these big ships, which are also remotely controlled. On their tractors, farmers from all over the country headed to the little town of Stru. Ignoring police instructions, they blocked motorways, causing traffic chaos. The rally was held at one of the threatened farms and was the largest since protests started a few years ago. Farms near national parks are hit the hardest, according to a recent government plan. 
ecosystems in the Netherlands have been severely damaged by nitrogen pollution and the country has failed to meet European standards. Nearly half of these emissions are caused by animal feces, produced at large-scale farms. An important meat exporter, the Netherlands has nearly 50,000 farmers. The breaking news about our first case of moneypox. It's a 30-year-old man living in Johannesburg. Uh, he has told uh, the NICD that he has not traveled outside of South Africa. So uh, basically they're confirming that it's definitely, um, you know, an infection that he got here. Right now we were hearing that it's, uh, you've got flu-like symptoms and a rash that is similar to smallpox. And that's how you'll be able to detect that you need to go test it, uh, get tested. But she says, she also says that uh, it's not, it's actually very difficult for it to transmit. Six people have been killed after a helicopter crashes in West Virginia. The Huey chopper was based at the Logan Airport and used for tourist flights. Both the FAA and NTSB are now investigating.